feet. Um, you will start with what is dispersal? What do you mean dispersal? What does it mean? Um, in literal terms, dispersal, kata. Um, yeah, you, are, you scatter things about. So dispersal is a scattering of fruits and seeds away from the appearance plant over a wide area. So the scattering of fruits and seeds from one point to another. Let's say the, the plant is in uh, area A. Then dispersal has occurred. Then the fruits has been scattered from uh, area A, maybe area B or area C. Now, as I said, why is this dispersal? Why is it important? Why, why, why what happens when it happens, when, when it occurs? Why do, why, why, why do uh, dispersal take place? Now, we have four reasons why dispersal of fruits and seeds are important and are advantageous to living organisms. One, it prevents overcrowding. Now, this point establishes or makes you understand that at the point in time when dispers dispersion is not taking place and uh, plants are colonizing the same area, there would be a lot of them at the same place. Now, it will make them overcrowded at one point in where they are. Now, when they are overcrowded, it leads to the second point, reduces competition for light and nutrients. Because there are many at a particular point in time, they are all struggling for the same resources. They are all struggling for the same light that, has, that, that will be shown on them to enable them to, to use for their food. Again, they struggle for the same resources. Now, another point that um, why the dispersal of fruits and seeds are important is that it enables these plants to colonize new areas, new localities. So, as I said, you have a plant in plant, uh, area A. There's no, there's no, some of that plant is not in area B. But because of dispersal, you can find another, the staff plant, that same plant in area B. So, they are colonizing new localities. They are, they are finding new territory. Then the next one, if you are this dispersal is able to prevent this overcrowding, reduce competition for light. Now it minimizes epidemic diseases among crowded seedlings. So the baby plants, it minimizes epidemic diseases when. They, 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 are, they are not too crowded. So these are four most important advantages of fruits and seeds dispersal. Now, you may ask, what causes this dispersal? There are basically four factors. Basically four factors that um, are involved in dispersal of fruits and seeds. Now, these factors are also referred to as agents. So, you have agents of dispersal of fruits and seeds, or factors that affect the dispersal of fruits and seeds. Now, as I said, there are four. One, the first one, animals. Now, these animals include birds, bats, monkey, humans. So, we are all Insects, uh, uh, for insects is part of animals, uh, birds, bats, insects, monkeys, and humans. They are all agents of dispersal. Then two, wind. Three, water. Then four, explosive mechanism, also referred to as self or mechanical uh, dispersal. So you are going to look at how these agents affect plant uh, the dispersal of fruits and seeds or the enable dispersal to take place.
Okay. So let's look at dispersal by animal, the first one. Let's look at this dispersal by animal, how animals are dispersed or they disperse foods and things. Now, these are features that uh, enables these animals to disperse foods and seeds. One, the plant or the fruit is usually brightly colored and scented to attract, to attract animals. It either attract insects, either attract birds, either attract human beings, monkeys. So they are usually brightly colored and scented. Two, some of these fruits develop hooks on their coats so that they become attached to the hairy coats of mammals. So in an event where birds land on the fruit, these hooks get attached to either their feet or their, their feathers. Now the point they move from that place to a different place with um, due to gravity and when they shake off their wings or, or their legs, these fruits uh, these feet may fall off, or these fruits with hooks may fall off their skin, uh, their feathers, then disper dispersion are taking place. Another thing is that other fruits have sticky hairs on fruit, which can easily become attached to the fair skin or clothing. So the same point, even we human beings, when you are moving to uh, a bush, uh, let me use that word, when you are moving to a bush, and you find yourself, uh, you find certain certain plants getting attached to you. At the point where you leave that place and you get to a place where you say, oh, let me shake off what is around me. Now at that point, you are removing these fruits and seeds from your, 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 your clothes and they, tell, they, 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 they colonize a new locality where they find themselves. Again, in mango fruit, the fleshy metal cap is eaten by animals and the seed is thrown away. So, this same point, even animals too, after they eat their food, they, they throw the seed away, most of them. Uh, we ourselves, we also eat the fruits, we throw the seeds away. But there are some animals that when they eat this mango, they eat the mango and the seed itself. Now, germination can take place inside the body of the organism, that is the one, the animal that has eaten the, 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 the seed. At the point in time where the seed is not being digested, it comes out of the animal in the form of feces, who were established that during the germination. And the last feature of uh, animal dispersal is that, in others, the whole food is, okay, the point is even here, the whole food is eaten, and the undigested seed a later passed out of Pass out in the animal species. Pass out in the animal species. So these are all features that tells you or talk to you about um, dispersal by animals. Okay, so let's look at dispersal by wind. Dispersal by wind. Now, like the animals, these fruits and seeds are dispersed by the wind are either small or light. They are not heavy. They are very light, very small, so they are being able to be carried along by uh, the wind or current of uh, the wind. Now, what enables them to be carried away is that they have um, wing-like structures, wing-like or hair-like structures around them. So this enables them to be carried from one point to another. That is their feature. Now, you have plants like cotton or silk cotton, which have seeds surrounded by a mass of fine silk called floss. I don't know whether you've noticed when you are, uh, you, when you are, sometimes when you're walking around, you see that there are some white, white things that flow around us, they move around us. It's when you touch it, you get Apollo. That is the, the Ghanaian mentality that we had. Now that is the say that white, white thing is a floss that you see around it with the seeds in the middle of it. When the, the next time you see it, can you just uh, grab it and see and, and look at it very well? Uh, you don't get a polo. Uh, then the cipsula of tridax. So, uh, classification of the cipsula 
example of uh, as a trader, they have a parachute like tap of hair called the purpose. Uh, we spoke about it when we were doing the classification. And again, wing foot like the conventum are easily carried by the wing because they have wing like structures. Now, this is how it looks like. So, this is the silk pattern I was talking about. The first image here. So, you have the floss around it, then it's the in the middle. Then, with the purpose of um, the triders, you have it on top of it. So, the seed or the fruit is just below. Then, you have the, the, the purpose uh, uh, as extensions on top. Now, this conventum, the tacoma, you can have them having wings around them. So, these wings enable them to be carried away by the uh, current of the wind. They are, uh, they, it, it enables them to be moved from one point to another. So, these are all examples of um, fruit, that, fruit and seeds that can be dispersed by the wind. Dispersal by water. Dispersal by water. So, um, um, some fruits are ad adapted to float on water. The, when you place them on water, there's no way they would sink into the water, but rather they would, you would find them on top, on the surface of the water. They float on the surface of the water. Now, a practical example is coconut. You see very big. It's just big. But when you place it on water, it would, it would never sink into the water, but rather it would float on water. Now, why is this happening? Now, because the coconut has a fibrous mesocarp. The mesocarp is made up of fiber. Now, this fiber has numerous air spaces that trap a lot of air. That is one. Now, that numerous air space that has been trapped in the mesocarp reduces the relative density of the fruit, causing it to float on water. Point number two, the epicarp, that is the outside, is waxy. And so it repels water, making it waterproof. So water does not, does not enter the coconut itself. And the last one, the endocarp, that is inside, around the seed. That is uh, the layer before, uh, the layer where you, before you eat or drink the water from the coconut. That is surrounding the seed is hard and stony. Now this makes the fruit buoyant. This is where it also enables the fruit to be able to float on water. Now the fruit will be carried in the water current. Now, at the point where it has been washed ashore, the pericarp, that is the fruit wall, it rots and the embryo goes out through, through the endocarp. This is at the point where the fruit, or you will say it's germinating, to establish that. So, what you need to know about um, um, fruits that are dispersed by water is that the fruits are normally light, they are also light. They are not heavy because they are, they are usually made up of fibrous uh, structures that enable them to float on water. Okay. So this is how you have them. Uh, this is what you have for the coconut. You have your fibrous epicarp that is the outside, the mesocarp inside. The endocarp is the layer around the food you eat and the water you drink. So the food and the water comprises of the seed. Okay. Now, if you have any question, you prompt me. Thank you. Then our last um, agent or factor of dispersal is explosive mechanism, also referred to as self or mechanical dispersal. Explosive. Now they explode. Okay, I made a mistake there. Sorry. Explosive, E X P L O S I V E, explosive mechanism. Now, as the name sounds, explosive. So the fruit explodes. 
Now, it doesn't mean that it's a bomb that will explode. But rather, this fruit are under the dry, dehiscent uh, fruit, whereby the apericot dries up, breaks open to release the seeds. So, example is what you have in the legume when it's dried, when it's mature, uh, it's ripe. Uh, because pressure is built up in uh, the, the, the pericarp or the, the, the walls of the fruit, it causes tension to be created, which causes the fruit to split open. So you have examples as um, cotularia, balsam, flamboyant. They are all examples of fruits and fruits that can be dispersed by explosive mechanisms. They split open. You don't need to open them. They will be there, then they will split open. Now there's uh, they split, the seeds come out, they fall off. Some fall off a short distance, some can fall off of a, a, a quite a long distance. Not too, not too long, but something moderate. Then the feather are taking place. So this four factors enables you to know uh, how dispersion takes place. How the dispersion takes place. Now, after this dispersion has taken place, when the seeds fall on a, a, a surface, what happens? What happens thereafter? What do you say has happened after the seeds have been dispersed? Now, when these seeds are being dispersed or are being thrown from one point to another, there are two things that occur. There are two things that would either okay. Let me put let me use that way. There are two things that would either okay. Okay. Um, um. Michael, Michael, Ma Ma Michael has given an, another example of uh, fruits that can be dispersed by uh, explosive mechanism. Now we mentioned the okra. Marana is okra, O K R A, okra. There is no word in the dictionary as okra. So uh, we will be technical a bit. Thank you. So um, at the point of dispersal, as I said, there are two things that not usually occur. One, is either the seed will germinate immediately or it will undergo a resting stage. Now this resting stage is what we call dormancy. Now picture you eating a mango, uh, uh, an orange, then you throw the seed on the floor. Now the point where you throw the seed on the floor, you notice that the seed is somehow wet. At, the, at a point in time, it becomes very dry. Now the seed there is not dead. It's not dead. It's still alive. It, it's just undergoing a resting stage. That is what we refer to as dormancy. Now in this dormant state, as a, the, the seed is resting, but it's not dead. I've made it because it, it, it fails to germinate due to unfavorable conditions, such as drought. Now there's availability of water and low temperatures. So when you place, when you eat the orange and you leave the seed, you notice that at the point in time, the, uh, the, the seed coat becomes very dry. Now it's undergoing a period of dormancy. Now this period of dormancy is when the growth of the seed is halted. It has, the, the, the growth is being, uh, it's, it's on the weight, it's hot, it has been halted. Then two, metabolic activities of the seed is reduced to minimum. So the metabolic activities of that seed is reduced to the minimum uh, value. Now this seed in this stage may survive adverse conditions. They can survive for a very long time. They can be in a dormant state for a very long time. Now, the moment these environmental conditions or uh, these favorable conditions, they return or they come back or it's met, then germination takes place or starts. So 
we will define that this germination as the onset of growth of a seed, often following a period of dormancy. We define germination as the onset of growth, that the point where growth occurs, or when it starts, following a period of dormancy. So when the seed has been there for a very long time, and at the point where it starts, the germination starts, uh, there's, an, there's a growth of the seed. There's a small portion that is that old. And uh, the seed is growing. Germination has started. So germination is the onset of growth of a seed, often following a period of dormancy. Often following a period of dormancy. Now you can be asked, uh, give um, an why is dormancy important? Why is dormancy important? Now, one, it enables the seed to survive adverse conditions. It enables the seed to survive adverse conditions, condition, harsh conditions. That is one most important importance of dormancy. It enables the seed to survive adverse conditions, after which when uh, favorable conditions are met, then the growth of the seed takes place. Now, this germination, we have forms and types of germination in which uh, it takes place in plants. Now, we have types of this germination. Uh, how this germination takes place, how this onset of growth takes place. Now it comes in two folds. We have the first one, the epigel germination, then the second one, the hypogel germination. So, as I said, um, there are two types of germination. The first one, is the epigeal germination. Now this epigeal germination, if you could remember when we we're talking about cotyledon, we established uh, when, uh, uh, on the growth of a seed, there are three things that uh, goes out of the embryo of a seed. One, you have the embryonic shoot, that is the plumule. Two, embryonic root, that is the radical and three, uh, one or two cotyledons. So the cotyledons are the seed leaves, that are the leaves of the plant. The radical forms the root system, then the plumule forms the shoot system of the plant. So the first one, as I said, we have the epigeal germination. Now this epigeal germination This epidural germination is a type of germination or a type of growth in the seed where the acotyledon appears above the ground. Where the acotyledon appears above the ground. Now, this is as a result of an elongation of the hypocotyl. Elongation of the hypocotyl. Now, if you could remember, I said the hypocotyl is the lower part of the plumule. In our previous studies, when you look at when you when, when you refer to the structure of um, uh, a monocot and dicot seed, you find out that um, elongation of the hypocotyl, that is the lower part of the plumule, enables the cotyledon to appear above the ground in hypigeal, uh, epigeal germination, sorry. So examples of such seeds, you have um, custard oil, flamboyant, uh, cowpea seeds, bean seeds, uh, bean, 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 bean seeds. You have all of them in that family. So this is one type of um, germin uh, germination that we have. Then the second type, 
that we have is the hypogeal germination. Hypogeal germination. Hypogeal germination. Now, as compared to epigeal where the cotyledon is found uh, above the ground, over here, the cotyledon is found to, be, to remain below the ground. It's found to remain below the ground. That is hypogeal germination. Now, likewise to um, the epigeal germination, this also results from the elongation of the epicotyl. Is that a result of the elongation of the epicotyl? That is the upper part of the plume. So differences between this epigeal and hypogeal is that one. In epigeal germination, the cotyledon is found above the ground. Then in hypogeal germination, it is found below the ground. Then two. Then two. Um, this is as a result of epigeal germination, it results from the elongation of the hypocotyl, that is the lower, the lower part of the plume. Then with the hypogeal germination, it is formed as a result of the elongation of the epicotyl, that is the upper part of the plume. Then you can give examples to distinguish or to tell the examiner these uh, differences. So as you can compare, look at the images here, look at this one, look at the position of the cotyledon in this diagram. Then look at the position of the cotyledon here. Look at where this is. So note the two. The cotyledon appears above epigeal, below hypogeal. Above epigeal, below hypogeal. Above epigeal, below hypogeal. So you study the diagram. Study this two diagram. Then I would ask one question to know if you have an you understanding what I said. Okay, so the question is, looking at the two diagrams, looking at the two diagrams, where, where would you say one, the fruit would be formed, or where would the fruit be formed? Looking at the two diagrams, where would the fruit be formed? Then number two, what happened to the seed when germination takes place in the in the soil? So the first one, looking at the two diagrams, where would you say the fruit has taken place or would, would be found? And two, what happens to the seed after um there's a sprout out you are having your cotyledon below the ground what happened to the seed itself so i'm waiting for answers from you one or two answers from you would be much appreciated
Hey, no response. Okay, let me give you a. I know this. This will be like a true or false. Okay, I have one response. Let me see. Okay, Michael. Michael, your response is um, I'm hoping you want to say the fruit. The fruit, not the food. The fruit, not the not, not the food. The food, not the food, not, not the food. Now, you should note one thing. Um it doesn't mean that when they are formed, it's in the ground. So, Michael, um, your, your, your statement with the FPGL, because they are seed, uh, their quartilizon is found above the ground, the fruit itself would be above the ground. If it's not even above, it would be little above the ground. Compared to the hypogeal, compared to that of the hypogeal, where you can have your 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 uh, your fruit either above or below the ground. So, in an example, in the maize, your fruit will be found above above the ground. Then in yam, the fruit will be found below, or uh, the main structure will be found below. So these two things are what you are supposed to note. Now with um. Uh, that, 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 that is the answer I wanted, whether it's below or above. Now, the second thing, what happens to um, the seed after this germination has taken place? What happens to the seed after the germination has taken place? What happens to the seed after germination has taken place? Okay, so uh, Michael has said it's what? Very well. Okay. So indeed, um, would would know whether what Michael said. It looks as if <clears throat> uh, Michael is the only one uh, responding to the question. So, in the absence of others, would move on and know um, what goes on. Okay. Now, um, before this germination can take place or when this germination takes place or has to take place. Now there are some factors that would enable them to there are some factors that would um, uh, enable them to be able to undergo this germination. Now these factors start with one the seed has to be viable. The seed should or have to be viable. Now this viable means that the seed can survive under favorable conditions. Can survive under favorable conditions. Now at the point where the seed is dormant, it's still viable because it can still undergo uh, germination when the conditions return. So the first important factor that you need to consider for germination to occur is that one, the seed needs to be viable, can survive on, on, uh, under favorable conditions. Then aside that, it can undergo uh, factors such as there should be water, water around to enable the plant to absorb uh, the water to the micropower. Then air, 
containing oxygen. So they require this air or this oxygen to be able to uh, produce or use the, uh, the air in the manufacturing of their own food when they are generated. Then three, one, one, suitable, that is suitable temperature. It has to, not, not a very harsh environment. Now indeed, there are certain plants that uh, their suitable temperature is harsh. There are others that their suitable temperature is moderate, and there are, there are others that their suitable temperature is warm, uh, low. So depending on the type of uh, plant, so you have some seed that will survive in the desert. It, it likes harsh conditions, so it will be able to, it will best suit that environment. When you bring that seed to this uh, savanna region, this are where we are right now, you find out that the seed might survive to, 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 to germinate, will struggle. Eventually, it might even die off. So every seed has its own um, adaptive features. Now, there are other internal factors, internal uh, conditions that enable uh, uh, health in this uh, germination of seed. You can have uh, actions of enzymes, enzymes in the seed, like enzymatic reactions that occur in the seed. Then you can have the energy that has been stored in the, in the food, stored energy in the food that is produced by the seed. Then in some seeds, they require light to trigger germination. Now these seeds are normally green in color, so they require light. So this um, seed uh, will trap a little light from uh, the sun, then it triggers the germination to take place. Now, example of this seed that enables or requires light to uh, germinate is, or to trigger its germination is uh, tobacco seed. The tobacco seed is uh, one that needs light to trigger its germination. So you can have these factors that enables um, seed to germinate. One, the seed should be viable, that is, it can survive favorable conditions. Two, water. Three, air, that is oxygen, containing oxygen. Four, warm, suitable temperature. Five, enzyme. Six, energy. Then seven, you have light in some cases. So these are all factors that can affect uh, or conditions necessary for germination to occur. And the most important ones that enable the mission to occur are the first four that is, uh, viable seed, um, water, air, and warmth. Viable seed, water, air, and warmth. Okay, so what happens after this? Uh, what happens during th this germination? How would you say germination would take place? What would, uh, what, 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 what would, uh, what really happens during this germination? Now, these are steps that need to be followed. Very simple. You have this in an examination. Uh, briefly describe how germination takes place. Five marks, seven marks, eight marks, something simple. Just this. this just this small data that I've given here is how germination takes place. Now, this germination begins with the absorption of water by the seed through the microphile. So, the, uh, what, where water is being absorbed into the seed through the microphile. Now, when that happens, the seed coat becomes soft and the seed swells up. So an example, you put, uh, you take a mango seed. Uh, sorry, let me use orange. At the point where germination begins, now water is absorbed by the seed, uh, uh, the seed to the microphone. 
then the seat swells up. Now, the whole seat doesn't swell up, but just that the seat coat become very soft. So the, the, the outer, the, the, the tester and the, te the, the, the tegmin become very soft. Then the seat itself uh, gains weight. So this weight that has been gained, it pushes itself to the seat coat. Now, the food that is being stored in the uh, cotyledon and endosperm, they are digested in the, uh, the seed. So the food that has been stored in the cotyledon and the endosperm are digested in the seed. Now, this food in the, uh, the seed are catalyzed by enzymes. They are worked on by enzymes. They are... Uh, Enzymes work on them. Enzymes uh, 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 what, what, what word do I even use? Uh, okay, let me use the word uh, uh, this catalysis of enzymes working on them enables their metabolic rate and metabolic activities to work perfectly. Now the end product of the digested food that has been catalyzed by these enzymes are being translocated to the growing part of the embryo. To the growing part of the embryo. Now, question, what is the growing part of the embryo? That is the question. I'll, I'm waiting for a response. The growing part of the embryo. Now, as I said, when the seed coat is soft, and the seed swells up. Now this um, digestion of food and uh, enzyme catalysis is taking place. Now the end product of digestion is that is translocated to the growing part. Put a pressure on the uh, on the seed. Now this pressure by the absorbed water ruptures the seed coat. Now the word rupture means that it will break open. It doesn't mean that it will break from all sides, but just a portion, then the embryo emerges out. So the, the, the seed coat will break or, or rupture, then the embryo emerges out. Now, at the point where the embryo emerges out, the embryo comes out, the first structure to come out is a radical. Okay, Michael, you, you've done well. So the, 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 the growing part of the embryo is the radical plumule and the cotyledon. So as I said, the embryo emerges out, but the radical comes out first. That is the root system. So the root system will try and anchor itself in the soil. Then followed by the plumule, that is the shoot system giving you the, the, uh, the, the stem. Then the cotyledon exposes itself, giving you the seed leaves. So this is how germination takes place in plants. So when you want to know whether germination takes place, your uh, conditions or factors need to be met. That is the seed to be viable. Two, you need water. Three, you need a suitable temperature that is warm for then air containing oxygen. The internal condition that that one will take place on its own. You can't go and uh, uh, provide the seed with enzymes. You can't go and provide the seeds with uh, uh, energy. They would, it, and it's internal, so they would, it will happen in, uh, internally. So, these are fact, those are conditions that are necessary for this germination to take place. So after this, the, the seed has germinated, then you have another plant, then this wraps up um, our study on reproduction and growth in plants, specifically sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. So in summary, we looked at the agents of dispersal of fruit and seeds by animals 
And these animals um, include birds, bats, insects, monkey, then humans. Then you have the wind, you have water, an explosive mechanism. We look at all of them. Then we look at germination itself. Stated that before germination can take place, uh, after dispersal of fruit and seeds, there are two things that occur. Either the seed germinates immediately or undergoes a period of dormancy. And this period of dormancy is a resting stage of the seed, whereby growth is halted and the metabolic activities of the seed is reduced to minimum. Now, after this seed has been able to survive this adverse condition and favorable conditions have been met, germination begins. So we're able to define germination as the onset of growth, often following a period of dormancy. When we look at the types of germination, that is the germination where the cotyledon is found above, epigeal germination, or where the cotyledon is found below the ground, hypogeal germination. And we established that the epigeal germination it occurs as a result of the elongation of the hypocotyl, that is the upper part of the plume. Then with the hypogeal occurs as a result of the elongation of the epicotyl, that is the upper part of the plume. The other one is the lower part of the plume. Then the hypogeal is the upper part of the plume. Then we look at uh, for germination to take place, then how germination takes place. So this ends our class today. I know it's very brief and short, but it has ended a topic on, uh, that is we are wrapped with, we wrap up on everything that we are doing. And God, God willing, in our next um, uh, lesson, we move into either chemistry, or physics. Now, with the asexual part of the reproduction, we will look at that one at the, uh, in the agric portion, that is looking at um, the vegetative propagation, where you have the artificial and natural method, you have rhizomes, you have burden, grafting, we look at that in the agric aspect. So we are going to end our uh, uh, lesson and discussion on this note, if you have any question, something I didn't understand, raise up your hands or you you send me the, you send a chat and I respond to you. Thank you.